Okay, so from there, um, I think this is where my, my story really starts and what I really want to talk about. Um, so from there, we, we start going to a COC church. Um, I can't remember the analogy. They changed their name now, but anyway, whatever. They're, they're fairly uh, Pentecostal, extremely Pentecostal. So we get to this church and we go through this church. And now I'm fairly illiterate biblically at this at this time but i start reading the bible i'm in a lot and i'm reading stuff and then i'm listening to what they're telling me and i don't know i'm just noticing some gaps here some some stuff that's not really lining up with what the word said so i've gone from that church i went to an aog church i found the same thing i went to a baptist church a few baptist churches went to the, so we've gone i think it was about eight or nine churches we've been to and it's the same thing. Like every time you go to this church, you know, uh, so I've, I've written down some of the things that uh, that they argue about or biblically what they say, but then I don't find it, I agree with it biblically. Baptism, you know, are we, do we need to be baptised as a baby or is it by choice as an adult? Tithing and giving, that's a big one. First church was Pentecostal. Uh, sin in the church, what do we do with that? Do we let people run around and sin or do we do what like Timothy and things like that? You know, we there's a, a process to not have that type of thing in the church. How far does that go? How does that work? Oh, that's a big one. Uh, election. Are we um, chosen from a hat? God, oh, okay, yep, you're saved. Oh, this is not, and this learns from that sort of thing. Or is it a personal choice uh creation oh boy i've uh, had some conversations about this one genesis is it true is or is it partly true or is there's a whole heap of stuff we need to add to it you know that we're not seeing is it part one separate from part two there's a whole heap of uh, that, that gets messy end times holy guacamole what do we believe about end times? Are we pre-trib? Are we mid-trib? Are we end-trib? Are we no-trib? Are we you know it's all been done everything's just an analogy sort of thing uh, the rapture oh the rapture's not in the bible oh, then people go well the word is actually harpazo uh, that's in the bible rapture's actually the greek word of that la 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 sorry the latin word of that english sorry harpazo is the yes yeah that's right I was, I was saying all right harpazo is the greek word and the latin translation of that was rapture there's a whole argument about that um, there's more arguments, but the last one would be Israel, the Gentiles, who are each party, what are their future roles, what were their uh, roles in, in the past, what are their roles now. So each church has its own stance on that. Now, when you get a pastor, say a Baptist pastor um, or a Presbyterian minister or whatever do, uh, denomination you want, they generally go to a school for three years maybe a bit longer if they get higher education and they learn doctrines and theories around what their particular denomination believes in biblically traditionally a lot too so i mean that's something else i'll probably talk about later a lot of this stuff is tradition and um I, I just I, it, for me it's frustrating because um, just because some I've always been a why person as a, even as a child why is the sky blue why can't we see God why this why that why that why everything and then I grew up in a household how can I say it nicely with with a parent who you just didn't know what and a grandmother you just didn't know what to believe because. There was lots of lying and fast half truths and and things like that, and it was just very difficult. And you, and you learn not to trust stuff and, and and people in particular. So I've always been a, a questioning person, question everything, never believe anything until you you find out why. Now, when I got into church, I found that that's not the case. That most of these people just believe something because some old guy he you know five hundred years ago he was really smart. He said something, he wrote stuff down, so we, we just believe that. Or there's some guy we watch on TV now, or we read his books, and he we you know we buy his stuff, and he's so clever. Um, so we just believe that. Um, okay, 
okay. So that's tradition. Um, education is evidence is what I would call the next thing. Um, although, you know, when you read the Bible, it's about context. And who was the passage written to? Why was it written? When was it written? What was the meaning of it? And who was it for? It's context. So I, it, it's, it disturbs me a little bit when you see a passage like from the Old Testament. Say so this is just an example. Clearly written, oh, Israel, my whatever, this is what I'll do with you. Da, 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 da. And they go, and the people go, oh, well, that's the church now because um, because that's because Israel is no longer important. Um, I sort of struggle with that a lot. Um, so it's about context. You know, you... They they all I see this a lot. They'll get one little thing, you know, to be a, a whole long book, really, of the Bible, and they'll get one little line out of it, and they'll go, "Oh, well, this is what the Bible says." Now I see that a lot, and that's how cults start. Some of this, you know, some of these theories and the way that people take sides on it, I think, is nearly cultish. Um, it doesn't matter what evidence you have against their theology. Sometimes they'll just go, oh, well, that's just what it says, and we don't understand it, and that's just what you just have to accept. Uh, no, no. Uh, God says he's not the author of confusion, that um, the Holy Spirit it will and can give you discernment, help you understand, and it's through God and through Jesus and through particularly the Holy Spirit that you're going to understand his word. Um, I think... A lot of the time we put too much emphasis and learning and on what old dead people said. Um, no disrespect to them. I'm sure there is some really good stuff written, you know, by church fathers and, and clever people along the way. And as today, there's, there's still some really clever people preaching and teaching. But there's and this is where this is where my butt starts. You've got one clever guy over here with all these doctorates and all this stuff, and I've been a minister for 500 billion years, and he believes in ABC. Then on the other side, you've got another guy with the same sort of qualifications, same sort of things, and he believes in 1, 2, 3. Now, 1, 2, 3 and ABC don't... There's a problem here, and they can't both be right. There has to be an answer. There has to be something that one of them has got wrong and one of them is right so which one is it which person is right um, i don't believe that any person um ever except for jesus because uh, he was perfect can ever have all doctrine and theories and theology down pat um, there's always something they're going to believe probably from their own emotions or from their own experience is going to affect what they believe. Now, I believe that some of these doctrines were probably, there was a family member, okay, so miracles, you know, I've, I've gone to a church, oh, there's no miracles anymore, there's no, that all stopped in the first century, la, la, la. And I sort of wonder why someone would believe that. And I come to the conclusion that probably along the line, there was a miracle they wanted, they prayed about it, it didn't happen, and someone died, or they didn't come to the Lord, or whatever it was. So now it's like they're... So now they have to justify that. So to justify that, then they go, oh, well, there's just no more Holy Spirit anymore. Um, it must have stopped, because this didn't work for us. So then you've got now whole denominations who believe that, because of this one person who said something. So I guess... So what I've learned, really, the most over 10 years is question everything. Never go to a Bible, uh, sorry, never go to church thinking that this is going to be your main meal for the week. Um, you know, I'd been to churches for about seven years. And then I was like, Lord, you know what? There are so many questions that I have about the Bible and about you that I just don't get answers for. They're never touched on. It's too hard. It's controversial. Uh, I think nearly every pastor I know will avoid revelation like the plague, a depth, not a few little glancing little things, but an in-depth look at, study of, non-traditional as well, um, not from some commentary somewhere, but they avoid it like the plague. Like, whoa, we are not going down there. It's too hard for us to understand. It scares people. You know, and I think also pastors probably play the game of a little bit of, well, people probably won't understand this. It's just going to be, you know, above them and, and yeah, 
anyway, so there was there was a lot of questions to a lot of things. Some of it I've just mentioned, you know. Israel, the rapture, end times, creation, election, tithing, giving, baptism. You know, they were probably the ones that I've started with that I'm going through. And so, so I started studying myself. I'm like, Lord, um, so first place... Oh, first place to go to is God. God, I need help with this. And and I read passages that, you know, he'll give you wisdom. He'll give you discernment. You know, the Holy Spirit is, uh, and all, all scripture is God-breathed. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we'll start with that. Uh, you look at commentaries, then, you know, you go into a place like Karong. Now, I'm not, I'm not looking at Karong. Karong is a great little resource. But it's the same thing as, as, as teaching. And, you know, I think when you go to buy a product, a book or a DVD or something, you really need to look at the person who's who's done it where do they come from? What's their background? Because their background is going to determine they're Calvinist people uh, from a Calvinist church. They're going to have certain views, and that's what they're going to teach you in their books and their DVDs. If they're more of a Catholic type person, they're going to give you more Catholic type teaching because um, they're all going to come from their little box that they've created in their denominations. And... Um, so just bear that in mind, you know, teachers, resources, Bible teachers, people on the internet, TV, I'm mean, just because they're on the TV doesn't mean anything. Just they're on the TV it means that they can actually make that network money. Okay, call me jaded, whatever, but that's that's how I look at it. Uh, so you need to, I guess, well, this is what I've done. We need to look at all these things 